Hello again, squaddies. Welcome to another new series. Yeah, I know I've been doing a lot of these recently. This, as you can tell, is the Curious Expedition. This is taking the place of the collaborations playlist, uh, the, co uh, the collaborations series I've been doing here on Tuesdays. Mostly because I ran out of stuff at the moment. If I build up some more, I'll probably go back to that. Now, the Curious Expedition is a curious game. It's a very pixelized art style, a very simple art style. But the basic idea is, well, let me show you. You choose one of these people here. These are various famous people throughout the world. So we've got Charles Darwin, author of Origin of Species, very famous naturalist. Marie Curie, one of the pioneers behind radiation, the study of radiation and the namesake of curium. And also, I think she's the one who discovered radium. Richard Francis Burton, like I said, heroic adventure with excellent knowledge of languages and cultures. I don't actually know anything about him other than his name and that. Same with Jan Huizinga, anthropologist and one of the founders of modern cultural history. Roald Amundsen helped find, like it says, legendary key expedition leader during the heroic Age of Antarctic exploration. One of the, I think he was one of the people to find the South Pole. Huang Fei Hong, Chinese folk hero, healer, master of the martial art Hung Ga. I think it's supposed to be Hung Gar which is a Chinese interior martial art. If you were familiar with the Last Airbender series, this guy is, a, is apparently a master of the style that is, that is used as the basis for the vast majority of earthbending. Next up, brand new person, Grigory, Grigory Efimovich Rasputin. Charismatic wandering mystic with seemingly magical healing powers. He was actually not the major villain ever, that a lot of media makes him out to be. He was actually a very... And he was also not like... A demonic person. He was a very religious man, and was actually great for the for the for the Romanovs. He was just villainized or demonized later on to make him seem e make them seem evil. Mary Kingsley, ethnographic explorer with a unique understanding of native people, and then of course Amelia Earhart, legendary pilot. Fly solo across first female to fly solo across the Atlantic Ocean. Now you'll notice that Amundsen here has a gold portrait. Frame. That is because I actually managed to beat the full game with him. What you do is you pick these one of these people, and there's going to be four other explorers, four other legendary explorers. They are going to race to become the most famous by finding a golden pyramid in various locations. If you've already heard all this stuff before, I'm sorry, but explaining it for those who don't. This time I think we're going to go with Amelia Earhart, because we, she starts off with some good stuff. She starts off with a native animal handler, which means that our donkey, which we also start off with, will have extra carrying capacity. We also start off with a sailor. Good stuff. Not really sure what he'll do, but he'll probably be good for combat. Now we do have the navigator perk, which increases gained compass accuracy when uncovering fields. You'll see what the compass is when we get into the game. We also start with a couple bottles of whiskey, which is good because we have sanity is a big deal. I'll set some torches, some climbing gear, a pistol, and some extra bullets. So we're going to start. Welcome back to Explorers Club, old friend. Have you heard that we are building a statue to honor our most famous member? Where is it? You have a good chance of seeing your likeness on that statue. However, I am afraid to tell you that you are not the only candidate. In your levels have six expeditions to prove who is the most famous explorer in our club. So we're facing off against Mary Curie. Johan Huizinga, Marcus Garvey, who I don't have, and Dion Fortune, who I also don't have. Now, Tourist Trip is the easy mode. Certain Death is obviously hard mode. I beat Amundsen's on Tourist Trip. I'm going to try it on Expedition. I'm probably going to fail, but we're going to try it. All right, so this is where we start off here in England. That's probably actually set in London. Good old London town. So we can go to the Humpa Lumpa Jungle. If you're wondering what that's a reference to, it's a reference to Willy Wonka and the Oompa Loompas. We can also go to the Wahomey Drylands, which seems to be out in out around Bermuda. We're gonna go we're gonna go to the Drylands just because the jungle has some extra challenges that I don't want to deal with at the moment. All right, this is just the standard starting. Air was fresh and tasted of salt as I made my way to the docks. We had little time before the ship would be ready, so I took so I took some pleasure in visiting my name in the newspapers. Brother Derek approached me during preparations. He boarded the ship and demanded we escort him to a nearby native village upon our arrival at our destination in order to spread the word of God. Except, So now we have to take the missionary, Brother Derek here, who is 
The strong minds, we have a little bit max, because he's technically part of our party right now, we'll have a little bit of max sanity. We can rest for free missions, but he's also a racist. Which, I mean, if you know anything about missionaries in these days, yeah. Now, normally, after the first expedition, you will be able to do some preparation, but, yep. There's our ship. We're on the river. And we're in the drylands. Alright. Now, we can access ship stores, but there's nothing here because we haven't gotten anything yet. We're also going to refill some water because drylands do occasionally have desert tiles that you have to go over. There are four types of environment. There's arctic, jungle, drylands, and desert. And each one has their own dangers. Arctic, I haven't really seen specific dangers, although you do tend to run across the idea that terrain is very temporary. We're also going to zoom out real quick to show you the map. The map starts off very small. I think it, I'm pretty sure it's just these right here. Now the compass that it mentioned is right up here. This shows the general direction of the Golden Pyramid we're hunting for. Across the top, we have our sanity. Like it says, mental state of track members drops zero, and more and more catastro cat catastrophic events will begin to occur. I can speak. Standing, this is how well the natives like you. Of course, this is our party. We have Amelia Earhart. She has two dice. You'll, the dice are used in combat and for certain challenges. So she's got a red dice, which is mostly about fighting, and a blue dice, which is mostly about mental things. Kuyir, our native animal handler, who has a green dice, which is mostly defensive and supportive. He also has some tra some uh, traits. He has good reputation, which is why we started with an extra standing bonus with the people. Animal capacity one, which means that our any animals we have will extra have extra carrying capacity. He's also superstitious. Loyalty is how like how much they like me. So this character feels about the leadership of the trek. Little loyalty results in additional conflicts. Capacity, that's just how much you can carry. Uh, Amelia actually has two. She also has navigator, and that's just a mission. And toughness, which is, of course, how much health you have. Now, like I said, it's toughness returns just to combat unless the wound becomes infected. That is a bad thing. That's why I'm kind of hoping we find some uh, someone to sell us medical kits pretty quickly. Isaac Carter Jolly, level one sailor. He has two combat, he has two green dice, and he's six toughness, so he's a pretty strong, pretty good combatant, pretty tough. He's also very good at carrying stuff, and he has flare usage, which we don't have any of yet, but you can get flares that will reveal parts of the map. The issue there is they will also occasionally set parts of the map on fire. And then of course we have Brother Derek, who is our racist priest. Alright, so you see the numbers here, that's just how much sanity is going to cost me to move. So we're going to move here. It's at impassable region, I don't know why, because it's very much not impassable. Now you get within, you saw that question mark turn into this. That is because once you get within two spaces of a thing, it will identify. Alright, so we could explore in darkness, which we have a one in three chance of getting that eye. I'm not going to do that. We have five torches. I'm going to use a torch. The torch and descended into the darkness. We reached a cove. It bore fascinating vestiges of some kind of ceremonial tomb. Within were large wrapped bundles that seemed to hold prodigious remains of dead bodies. Investigate the mummies. Those are too old and fragile to be of any intrinsic value. However, after a thorough investigation, our search proved fruitful. We found a mummy. We can take it back. I'm going to click take all just to clear that. Because what that'll do is that we can actually, once we get out of here, fame, the fame you get from getting to the. Oh, I unlocked the new explorer, apparently. But yeah, the fame you get... Oh, Isabella Bird. Okay, I don't know how I did that. You can get fame from a couple of things. First off, you can be the first one to find the Golden Pyramid, which is a great way to do it. Or you can... And you can also take back things like the mummy. Oh, that reminds me. The donkey has a special thing. Sir Dutton. He has eight toughness, so he's pretty tough. He's also got four carrying capacity. I'm going to take away some of that by mounting him. So he loses half his carrying capacity, but he gains a combat dice that is special. Brown ones are special for animals. We also gain slow mount, which means that travel costs 25% less. So you see that costs 13 now. 
dismount him. Cost 15. Now we're going to go ahead and head to this village because this is where we're trying to take Brother Derek. Alright, so these are a village of scouts. Pulse the Talker told us about the permanent, preeminent landmarks to set eyes on in the city, including a holy shrine which he marked on our map. The village of Welcome with smiles on their faces. They, we seem very popular in this region. I mean, we have a standing of three. So I'm going to see if they'll let us rest here, which takes one standing off. Need point at one of our crates. Hand over the mummy. All right, we're gonna go ahead and sleep because that'll give us 30, sta 30 sanity and two, but we lose two standing, so we're actually back to the negative. Let's see if anybody's willing to come with us. Ah well. Let's see if anybody is willing to trade. Now I could take the golden head, but that what this is this is the trade screen. This down here, this bottom shows how close you are to getting a deal, like it says on the bottom right there. Now, the more red you have, the more of this stuff I have to give up. If I have green, that means a good thing. Uh, cancel. Okay, so there's the holy shrine. I'm gonna head over here first, because a stone circle is a very useful thing to get. So what stone circles do, is they allow you to reveal ruins, settlements, camp points, or caves. I wanna get ruins. Okay. Okay, because he is superstitious, he is now also angry. Okay, there's a 20% chance to boost his loyalty if I promote him, which would also get animal capacity up. Or I could promote this guy. I'm going to promote Kuyir because the extra chance at loyalty is great. Okay, uh... Actually, no. Cancel that. Because Kuyir is very much not okay with doing things unknown. So we're going to keep heading this way. Although, apparently the golden... Why is the compass freaking out? The golden pyramid was way up here a minute ago. Yes. If you have hills, that is where the climbing gear will come in handy. Right, I'm going to use up half my sanity here. Half my remaining sanity here to go down this way. Now we're gonna take a swig of whiskey. And Kuyir is alcoholic immediately. Now, the way you level up is you get these stars. You do that by exploring regions and finding stuff. I think we found it. Yep, there's the Golden Pyramid, so. Jungles, you can get through each of the different terrains as something, as a special. Uh, item you can use to get through it easier. The water is for is for the desert. There's nothing specific about drylands that you need to worry about. Oh, there's a magnetic mountain. That's why my compass was acting up. The Arctic, you need snowshoes, and then the jungle, if you have machetes. All right, so we're gonna enter the pyramid because we're the first one here. Golden Pyramid, New World Bonus, Speed Bonus first. So, 360 fame. I don't know where the extra 10 comes from, but whatever. We're going to finish that expedition. This is the end of the first expedition. There are six expeditions. And you get to pick one of three perks. There is somebody that gets five, that can choose from five perks, and there's a way to get there. But, let's see. Uh, I'm going to do Strong Mind, because I need more sanity. I have a tendency to overdo it on sanity sometimes. And here's the final tallies, tally screen. It shows you your rivals and how far ahead they are. So Marie Curie is in the lead. Johan is in second right now. Marcus is in third, now fourth. And Di Dion Fortune is not doing well. Unfortunately, I don't have anything to sell because what you can also do is if any items you bring back that can be sold, you can sell them at the auction for money, or you can give them to the museum for extra fame. So I'm a little bit behind Mary Curie at this point. Or we can go to the, the Lunatic Arctic or Tiki Taka Jungle. I'm gonna go to the Arctic. Actually, no, I think we'll go to. The, yeah, I, I want to go to the Arctic. I just stored my equipment. Ship. We had little time before the ship would be ready, so I imagine that what my visage would look like on the Society statue. Woman was mad it was clear from the start, but she did introduce herself as the Empress of Moshmeshistan. 
and once she always treat royalty politely. She demanded my support to claim land for her newfound empire. I was not sure what to make of her inquiry, but she promised me a handsome reward. All you had to do was plant purple flags in the name of that place. Yeah, why not? Um, but all I could think of was the gold I could get out of her. Her, her flags, and wish me luck. All right, now this is—we can actually recruit people. Claudia Rue, the cook, cooks. If you have raw food, if you have raw meat, you can cook meat to gain sanity. She is claustrophobic, though, so that would mean close spaces. She lose cause more sanity. And yes, we can also recruit Jim Sterling, who is a merchant with Haggle. I'm gonna take Jim. I'm gonna take Mr. Sterling because extra diplomacy is always good. Now you have a couple options because uh, diplomacy means cheaper stuff in the mission. All right now, I only have thirty dollars or thirty funds, so I can't buy much. I'd like to buy quite a few first aid kits, but because I ran, I used up all the whiskey last time. Buy a couple of chocolate bars. And five snowshoes. Now, animal improvement, usually you can get like a saddle to make your animal better at carrying stuff. This time, I think I'm just going to go on. Because I don't have a lot of money. Okay, there's a polar station. Polar stations are a special thing in the Arctic. They also have a special unique currency that you need. That are these are uh, polar claim tickets. I think is what they are. All right, let's access the ship storage real quick. Put the water away because we don't need the water. Temporarily put the snowshoes away and then take them right back out. Close. We don't need water here. Although there is a way to make it, so we need it. I don't know why it's saying reach world two. I've already done that. All right, so the flags go there. Let's see, we've got quite a ways to go on the flags. Okay. Now, if you go into the deep snow, like it says, you do need snowshoes, which is luckily something I bought. I don't know why the snowshoes break after one use, but there's a cave entrance there and an altar over there. Okay. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and promote Jane, Mr. Sterling and promote Mr. Carter Jolly. Problem is, we're going to have an issue with loyalty with Kuyir because he is alcoholic. Let's say, warn us about disturbing the gods. We will leave. Now, you'll notice I'm burning through sanity relatively quickly. It's just. That's just how I end up playing this game a lot. Problem is, if you don't explore shrines and stuff, you don't usually get a lot of fame. Go ahead and eat chocolate. Chocolate is only worth 10, but... Yeah, I know you're alcoholic. Deal with it. Okay, we are going to have a serious issue in a few minutes, in just a second, because I'm out of sanity. And I have yet to even come close to the... All right, who's got nuts? Don't tell the animals at tea time. I heard an angry curse. Isaac Carter Jolly had been bitten. It was bleeding from an open arm wound. Sir Dutton's attack. I don't want to, but that gets us some sanity back. Oh, cool. I do really need to find the Golden Pyramid right about now. And we're gonna go nuts. Somebody already did. Someone's missing... Someone's chewed on some meat. He was gnawing on a half-eaten human leg. He killed our sailor and ate him. Well, that's... special. Let's visit the polar station and see what they're expecting. But yeah, you see, this is the claim ticket. You have to trade for them. Now, 
There is a bit of a balancing act here, but... That'll work. All right, we need to rest. Gonna do this again. I'm gonna lose three days, but better 90 sanity than, you know. All right. That is a Mammoth Graveyard, which I really don't want to enter right now. Alright, so he is still cannibalistic, alcoholic, and superstitious. I'm going to dismiss him at the end of this expedition. He's just too much of a liability at this point. Okay, if I go anywhere near those Arctic Wolves, they are going to attack. Okay, I'm going to do this just to stop them from attacking me first. Now this is the combat system. You roll dice, and what you do is, you see how some of these dice are shaking? That's because they are combos. Problem is, I don't have anything to make with that, so I'm just going to bother. Not going to bother. And then your opponent goes and just instantly one-shots a good chunk of my expedition. One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hold those. Flank you. This is where they. This is probably where we die. Yep, Amelia Earhart's down. It's just down to Jim Sterling with a gun. Can Jim Sterling survive this? No, he cannot. He's dead. And that's the end of the expedition. This game is brutal. So. That is the first run of this done. If you enjoyed, please like or favorite the video. You can also leave a comment down below if you have anything you'd like to say. And if you want to keep up with me and any of my current series, and consider joining the squadron by subscribing to the channel. That does help me out, and I really do appreciate it. I'm not sure if you can hear the smile in my voice from this, but... As for that, squaddies, I have been D. My apologies to Jim Sterling for that one, because I royally messed up. But it was fun. Until next time, good night, and good gaming.